Hi guys, welcome back. Uh, continuing on, um, assuming you've studied a little bit from our previous video and kind of weighed the odds one way or the other, and uh, keeping in an understanding how I feel about the necessity of a second passport and how everybody needs one in terms of part of your plan B or an exit strategy, but assuming you move on, and um, yeah, this sounds right, I am going to be going there. Uh, first of all, if you're not coming to live here, maybe consider applying for the passport of, you know, for the country of origin that you're going to be living in, obviously. But uh, continuing on, will I use this passport? Well, I, uh, that's really a good question. I, I think you won't use it, to be honest with you, other than an exit strategy. Because passports are done in rankings. Um, by power, like uh, rank one is more powerful than rank two and so on down the line. Um, I did a little bit of research on that and uh, I know, well I was uh, quite pleased to find out the Dominican passport over the last four or five years has climbed nicely in the power ranking because <clears throat> it's not the type of information you know, a person's going to do on a, on a every six month basis. but. The last I was on was about four, four and a half years ago, and uh, it was like 48 countries. Uh, now it's 64. And some, some nice changes there. I see uh, Hong Kong, uh, all of Indonesia, Israel, Japan, Malaysia, uh, the Philippines, Peru is now there, Singapore, uh, South Korea, and uh, upon uh, waiver on arrival, uh, Kitor. So... It's nice to see it climbed up. Uh, power rankings run anywhere from um, 1, the strongest, to 95, the weakest. And the Dominican Republic is still ranking in, number, uh, in the 66. Now, there, the, in the power rankings, quite often you'll find more than one passport. All the power rankings tell you is the number of countries that will honor your entry without a special visa being required. That's all it does. So the more countries that will, the term, the stronger the passport. Um, I'm kind of smiling a bit, though, because old Barry, being the trans enthusiast that, 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 that I am, the research junkie, I made it clear in several posts going back five years ago, you, you're going to find things slowly get more restrictive. Slowly. This isn't a light switch. You might remember that. It's a dimmer switch where it slowly goes higher or lower. Anyway, uh, what I found even more interesting was my country's passport, Canada, and my second passport, U.S. I have both. Uh, lucky me. It went from uh, Category 1, last time I checked, uh, down to Category 4. Now that... That's understanding trends, because I was talking about that five years ago, and until people have them smack in the face, I ain't going to do nothing about it. But it's kind of interesting. Uh, Germany uh, is now in a rank one. Uh, Singapore outranks a U.S. and Canadian passport in terms of country of entry. By only two more, but it's still in the, in the next, it's in power rank two. Uh, Sweden, Finland, Italy, France. South Korea, how about that? Interesting. Uh, Luxembourg, Netherlands, Belgium. And then you start going into rank four, and that's where you're going to find Canada and U.S. are with uh, two other countries in rank four. Uh, at uh, Both of them are good in 158 countries. So it's not a strong difference, but the point to consider is what used to be in rank one is now in rank four. What used to be in rank 70... 77, checking my old notes, is now ranked 66. So it's up 11. Interesting. Uh, so much for when I say the world is one giant transmission, okay? And the U.S. might be the planetary gear, but all the teeth are meshed. That's a pretty good example of that. But anyway, are you going to use it? Probably not. Um, like I say, it's for an exit strategy. you got to determine... If, like I say again, I'm going to repeat it again. If you only have one passport, you need a second passport. Assuming, is this the right one for you? I don't know. Um, I don't know if you're going to ever use it again because uh, 
still the balance of these 66 countries there that uh, the DR is good in. I mean, just checking over my notes pretty quickly. Probably at least 50 of them you'd never want to set foot in, so big deal. But um, other than an exit strategy, should emergencies come, and, and, and I do strongly believe there is going to be a restriction of movement and restriction of movement of money. We're already addressing issues with that with some of our subscribers. I would say for the exit strategy, absolutely, and, and the added sovereignty it, it gives a person. But uh, I can't see once you're out of the country ever using it. Um, you're going to travel if you have a, a various European passport because they all rank much higher. Uh, Canadian passport much higher, U.S. much higher. The only thing I'd caution you is some countries, and I know the big one, uh, U.S. of A., um, they only allow two passports, last I checked, and upon a third you have to relinquish one. So if you're already holding two passports and you are a U.S. Uh, citizen too, like me, it's my second passport, uh, I'm not, I'm staying with a permanent residency, I'm not even considering uh, looking at a Dominican citizenship a passport because of the fact that I have the American passport. If I didn't, I probably would. But I'm a permanent resident, but I'm not about to give up Social Security uh, on either the other Canada pension, CPP and old age pension and Social Security. So either passport I gave up if I wanted a Dominican, I'm giving up part of my uh, pension, as long as pension's still available, that is. <laughs> but that's a whole nother story. But you see what I mean? So for me, it makes no sense at all. That's why I'm saying, don't rush into things. Um, I'll do my best to answer all your questions. I'm going to set up another interview with one of the attorneys in the Capitol just as soon as O'Berry has time. But this should give you more than enough to think about because it certainly isn't right for everybody. I'm just checking. I made sure I did go over everything I wanted to on that. Yeah. Um, notice the trends, okay? Notice certain countries are going down, certain countries are going up. Remember the old transmission? Everything's connected. And decide for yourself if, if it's worth pursuing for yourself. I, um, I think that's a subjective decision, but uh, if you don't have a second passport, I will, say, I will say, rather in closing, this still is one of the more affordable ones. And on my last video, I'll start talking a little bit about uh, what it costs and what you'll have to do and what your obligations are. And we'll close this chapter and move on. Uh, of course, I'll address your questions. But we'll, we'll leave that for the third. So right now, there's a fair bit of thinking because it's not for everybody. For some people, it's if you're already holding a second passport, uh, it doesn't pay to do it. I don't think. Not if you're going to be here for even, even two years. I think it's like 12,000 pesos, so 200 bucks. You know, 250 bucks for two years in a country. You can't get your renewals for that price. And what benefit do they give you? That I don't know. That's your. You have to answer that for yourself. So we'll catch up with you on the next one, and we'll discuss fees and how long it takes and what forms you'll need. And uh, we'll talk to you soon. Hope this is beneficial. Till next time, it's Barry and Di. We'll talk to you later. Bye.